simple matter how do people release the whole of the, that, what's that attachment to identity? Not the cultural parts, but that it seems to me that it, it, it connects some some uh, a deeper sense of self, you know? It's about life and death. And most of the time it's unconscious. Um, and I know it's also like these, the, the, these fears are passed <coughs> on culturally. Like I, I've experienced in my life where I find myself uh, you know, weeping. And I realize that this is about more than me. And then I have these very vivid, vivid like images of the famine in Ireland, 1845, 1845. When we, you know, we are like a million people died of starvation and a million people died in these coffin ships come to the United States. <coughs> you, you hear that story as a child. It's a story. But what I've discovered more, more I think, what's, what's actually true also is that those stories and what they're holding, the pain and sorrow and the loss that they hold, if it's not dealt with, gets stored in the cells of the body. We know this now from, you know, the science. Mm -hmm. And it's passed on through the generations. So here I am, and I'm here, and I'm like, oh, it's a like hundred years ago. But it's not, in that sense, it's still alive. So that's a whole other issue, and how do you, you know, how do you heal from that? And of course, these communities, we keep these stories alive. It's like, you yeah, you keep retelling the story and the narrative, you tell them endless, endless telling of the stories, the endless singing of the song of liberation. And the idea that you might enact it to suggest that you're actually keeping this alive is counterproductive. It's actually keeping you enslaved and trapped. That's not, that's not an easy message to deliver. Just to make it a little more complicated, maybe it's a little personal, I have to admit I'm a Serb, so... A Serb? Yeah. Uh, there's definitely genocide that happened in Srebrenica by Serb people. But there's also genocide happened to less number of the Serb and Croats by Muslim. Okay. And sometimes to make the local conflict like in middle Yugoslavia big, when big country like America label one whole group of people, they say, you are a bad guy, you are a Bolshevik, you are this, you are that. And you are this good person, guy. If you are Croatian Catholics or you are Muslim, it not only doesn't help solve the conflict, but actually makes it even more, more global in a way. And I mean, we might not feel it maybe here, but I really feel like it's a responsibility for us in America as a as a, as a country leading, hopefully leading the world <laughs> in a good way, um, to kind of how, how everything is in the universe and gets connected and interrelated, you know. And, and, uh, and it was very deep. And I really, really want to even dialogue deeply about those issues. We can come to the core. But just political means and quick label of whole nation, whole people. Yeah, we can call genocide what is genocide, but we can call whole nation genocide nation. Yes. Or good guys, bad guys, you know. And so it really goes deep, you know, and, uh, and complex. Um, I just want to make a comment. Yes. No, thank you. About that. Absolutely. Because when we, we, we get caught in, is what's sometimes referred to as the, the, the victim Olympics. Who <laughs> 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 suffered most? Yeah. Which is very difficult because, you know, how, how do you begin to compare or talk about, you know, what happened to Jewish people from what happened to Armenians or the Irish or the surgeon? Yeah, as I was I was in Germany last March for two weeks with a family that was very close to me. And um, the mother, the wife showed me around uh, Forheim, which is a small Bavarian city. And there's a, it's, she didn't have much to say about it, but there's a, there's a little placard, and there's this hole. And I said, well, what's this hole? It's in the middle of town. Well, that's where the synagogue was. Yeah. That's all that's left. And I went through all throughout Forheim, no synagogues. I went to Bomberg, no synagogues. Another sign, another hole. Munich, another sign, another hole. Nuremberg, another sign, another hole. They're gone. Yes. And we talk. We didn't really talk about. It. They don't. They said you can go to Dachau, but you don't really want to go there. But it's something we don't talk about. You know, it's there. But we don't talk about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Colleague of mine is 
started to do some work with victims, the children of Nazi uh, parents, and the children of uh, Holocaust survivors. And, you know, it's very amazing work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I, I was, I wrote down what you said, said about, um, you know, getting to the identity, uh, the issue of identity and the sense of self. And so I wrote down, how do you build a humane sense of self? And you mentioned that most of the time it is unconscious, but you know we're bringing it forth to the consciousness. And and I'm thinking, okay, so how do we get conscious throughout our experience of the building of a sense of self, so that as we educate as parents, as educators, to develop a more global sense of self. Yes. You know, I, I can see the European Union as a step forward, as the United States of America. We're a melting pot. People have come, except for the Native Americans, but they also came over the land bridge. So we don't, we don't have a sense that we generated a, a civilization on our soil. We are um, supposedly migrated civilizations from the old world to the new world, both South and North America. So we already have that sense of history of a melting pot of cultures coming together, more so in North America than South America. So there's a more open-mindedness about the sense of self because people came from where they came to almost eliminate some of that sense of old self. They brought some with, but they wanted to shed some. So we have that in our cell memories. So then how do we, because you were saying America, you know, we may be the hope of the future. So then how do we take this question forward as we move through our lives? So we answer it quickly. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. It's a powerful, powerful yes, question. That's, <laughs> it's a powerful question. And, and it's, it, you know, I think one of the great challenges we face in a world that, you know, through technology is now pushed us together is that in a world that's going more and more global, where we're world citizens, what does it mean then to be an American or to be Irish? And I think what we see happening is that we have this continuum on a global citizen, and then there's me. And the more this threatens national identities, the more the whole system we've known that we've identified as nationalisms, and that's now been shaken, then people will, you know, they'll either adapt, you know, begin to adapt to that, or they'll hunker down. And people hunker down when they feel threatened. And they hunker down and hold on then to nationalism. It becomes the anchor. I think that's one of the things we're finding now is that the, in, in the world is increasing this, this tension now between a world that's moving to the, the reality that we are, there's only one family. And one of the challenges that Nancy's raising is, and, and it's a huge education challenge, is how do we develop a system of education that uh, connects people to what we inherently know is true? That there is only one family. <coughs> We're all interconnected. So that it's fine to be Irish, or, but, but if, you know, that identity is, is holding on to identity as being Irish as the whole sense of what reality is that that's that's part of the problem and, and this this movement you know, this adaptation to the, the problems we face are beyond any one country now and if we can embrace this but right now we're being forced in spite of ourselves to have to cooperate mm -hmm. Some places there's, there's data that where people are learning to cooperate, you know? But it's being forced on us, and when it's forced, people resist being forced to change. And, and so that's why national, national identity becomes an anchor. It's a safety, security blanket. This is my hypothesis, right? And we're in a huge shift now. Huge time of adaptation. Tremendous opportunity and possibility, but it's not guaranteed. And in the absence of leadership, in the absence of you know, people with that capacity to uh, 
have that freedom in your own identity. I mean, 